The reason I've rung, I just want to have a go at Simon because over the last 18 months, two years, every time Wilder's name gets mentioned, he's always having a dig. He's got a bee in his bonnet against him. I then do, yeah. I don't why, like his behaviour. Yeah, yeah no, I, I'm don't. absolutely Simon, cast iron, cap bottomed about don't like his behaviour. Not a bee in my bonnet, straightforward fact. Yeah, but, don't but, like his behaviour. The reason is because he, he had a pop at the chairman a couple of times after, after games. And the only reason is because he didn't back him. He, he, he were after players. There's like a line. Watkins, There's Maltby. a line you cross, and I absolutely think this manager's right to push up against it and to have that, that that vantage point of being able to push their chairman, push what they expect from their chairman. But there is also a line, and I think he crossed it. And that, for me, um, is something I don't find particularly acceptable. I don't find him particularly palatable. I think it's a one-way transaction. I, I, I miss that. What, what have you said about him? Would you, why do you think he was? Um, well, if you saw the manner badly. in the manner in which he conducted himself towards the end of his his first tenure at Sheffield United, it was a full on tee off against his owner. It wasn't just a case of I'm not you're, particularly you're not happy. having that, Michael. No, Simon. He, he had players from League One playing in the Premier League. He got players John Egan, Fleck, Duffy. The the, the list goes on. He, he turned these. He, he coached these players. John Egan were four million from Brentford. Everton were after him at one point for thirty million. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Uh, what's that got to do with the price of cheese? Coutinho was eight million quid when Liverpool bought, and they sold him for 150 million quid. Players are made into better players. There's a line, I believe, that you don't cross with the owner, and I think there's a, the, the, in private you can say what you want within reason. You can push. You can have a very strong, robust conversation. When you drag it into the public domain, you're pushing the envelope. It's about respect. If you don't like it, resign, walk away. Don't do what he did, which is set the place on fire and make it all about everybody else but himself. Well, Simon, us Northerners like to see on. Um, we, we like to see what we're getting for his money, and and he'll he'll give us it. Graham, you you were once there in Premier League, and you said to you, one, I forgot what game it was, but you you wanted to buy a season ticket down there. You were at the game that day. He'll give us some passion back. We need it, man. The see, three I... first challenges in first sixteen seconds on Saturday were absolutely ridiculous. Fifty fifties, get into the man. Can, you've got Michael. No. Simon, did you Michael, say that? Did you one say that? You, you yeah, buy a season yeah, ticket I did a game there for a Sheffield Sky United. and they were fabulous. Yeah. It was a fabulous yeah. watch. You had full backs at outside right, you had centre halves at centre forward. They, they had a right go and it was I think they were playing Michael, I think it was Man United that game. Was it? Yeah, it was, was, it was Man, right, Man United played that right. game. But you've you've generalised about what he said. Is this the same owner? This yeah. the, Well, I'm sorry, this owner at the start of the season was wrong to say the club is now up for sale. Yeah. So, well, he's not wrong you, to say it. I'm, I'm not... You can put I'm, it out for sale and still support it, can't you? explain to what, what exactly did... Um, well, I can't, what, I can't Chris recite say. verbatim what he said. But, he, he, but at the time, it was... For me, it was over the top. Now... Look, but surely he'd be that'd be born out of frustration when you're a manager. Oh great, you guys can say what you want then. You, no, not not say what you want. We don't. We're not privy to the to the conversations he had with the owner in private, and maybe it was born out of frustrations. He he was going well. He wanted his team to get better, and as a manager, you're always pushing the chief executive, stroke chairman, stroke owner. We need more because we can, you know, with a little bit of help, we can push fine. on to this and, next and you level. you do that in a certain way. Now, you had maybe this, got frustrated. This, the season you're talking about was the first season when they were brilliant. Mm. They were brilliant. They went up and he was brilliant as well. His attitude was brilliant. He talked about playing against teams like Chelsea and not being grateful to be there because we're in the Premier League. We deserve to be mm -hmm. here. We're equal on this pitch. And I liked all that. But the moment it didn't go his way and he didn't get exactly but, what he thought he was entitled to, and I'm sure the Sheffield United fans would have a different view, I don't think that's the right way for a manager to behave. Well, I think I'm, there was a line. I think he crossed well, it. You can't be specific because you can't remember I can't remember it but I know as a manager you're forever wanting more and more and if you're not like that you're in the wrong if job if you played the audio if, uh, of what he said after one, one particular game you would understand to some extent what I was referring to Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport